to come speak to him. And I would call him in my office at the correctional facility, and every time he would leave the office, I would look to the sky and I would say, okay, God, I guess that was for me. Um, even though he was struggling and going through one of the most difficult times in his life, God used him to carry the message to me, and I never know who's going to carry the message to me. Um, Dean, I love you as my brother, and I just want to say that even though you're struggling sometimes, you have always carried the message to me, brother. opportunity to celebrate your life and what you've done for us, Lord. We thank you for gathering us together. You said when two or more gathered in your name, there you are also, Lord. I believe that you are here with us. I ask that you help me speak through me, Lord, and, and let, let your love touch the hearts of the people in this place, Lord. Let us leave this place new and refreshed and ready to carry on the day, ready to share your love with the rest of this world. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, let's start off with a question. How many of you know Jesus Christ as a personal Savior? <laughs> wow. That's a beautiful thing. You know, I believe that this is what the church is meant to be. You know, I believe that what we have right here this morning is more powerful and more spiritual than, than those giant mega churches and, and all those things that they got going out. All that. This is what it's about. A real community of people loving each other. You know, not to knock any of those people or any of those giant churches. Some of those churches are incredible. But a lot of these places we walk into nowadays, you walk in and out without ever saying hi to anybody, you say hello, hey, how you doing? And you lie and say, yeah, I'm doing great. When really it's, no, I'm, I'm not okay. I'm struggling, I'm hurting. That's what this is about. You know, loving our brothers and saying, I'm here for you, I'm with you, I'm fighting with you. And man, have, have my brothers come alongside me all this time. It was about 18 months in the run. And I was sitting right out there in the very beginning. You know, and, and talking and, and seeing in, in my mind's eye this right here, seeing what it's blossomed into. And I can't tell you the joy in my heart to stand before you today. Let me tell you guys a, a, a little story. Uh, most of you are probably familiar with it, but we're going to go all the way back to the beginning, to, uh, to Genesis, to Adam and Eve. So God created man, God created Adam, he loved Adam. The angels can't understand why God loves us so much because we're so full of sin. We're so wretched, we're so impure. And they don't know impurity. They're, they're perfect created beings. What they don't understand is that only in this lifetime do we have the opportunity to praise Christ, to love God through the pain, through the suffering. And it's that praise, that joy that we give to Him, that honor that we give to Him, even when we're hurting, even when we're struggling, that is so effective and so powerful and worth to God a relationship with us, with man. So God creates Adam, and all, all, all he ever wanted to do was walk with Adam, talk with him, hang out with him, be, be pals with him. Satan, you know, Satan's a, a, a tricky guy, so what he does, you got Adam, who God loves, and you got sin that God hates. So Satan's great deception, great con, is to try and figure out how do I put what God hates into what God loves? So he does. 
He says, that he, he tricks Eve. He deceives Eve. Adam wasn't deceived. Adam was there the whole time. Adam made a choice. He chose the sin. He chose the woman. So God, so Satan puts what God hates into what God loves. So now he says to God, you have to make a choice. You have to kill what you love or you have to love what you hate. It's a problem. All, it goes, well, fast forward. And in Isaiah, it talks about the chastisement of our peace was upon his shoulders. <clears throat> See, when, when we took sin into our lives, we became enemies of God. God knows no sin. God's perfect. So when Satan did this, he put sin into Adam. Now we're at war. Now Adam and God are at war with each other. Now God said to Adam, when you do this, you will surely die. God's not alive. <laughs> so so that's, what, that's where Jesus comes in. You know, I, I don't know why the rest of you love Jesus so much, but I love him because he's the solution. He's my peace. He's my way to God. He made the bridge when there was no bridge. He made a way where there was no way. He said, that, he said it pleased the Father to kill him. How is that? Well, let me tell you, when, when Jesus hung on that cross and bore the weight of the world, the weight of the sin, do you think the Father saw my face? He saw me. He killed me in my sin. And now he sees me through Jesus' eyes. It says that we do not serve a high priest who doesn't know what we go through. In every way he was man, in every way he was tempted as man, in every way he walked the same life that we walked, yet without sin, yet without blame. Can you imagine? I can't go a day without it. You know how I start every prayer? Every personal prayer of mine, God, please forgive me. God, please forgive me. I had a dream one night, and uh, I was in this giant like amphitheater. In the middle was God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. And there was just people everywhere, packed. It was a big circle. And, uh, and God called out, who was worthy? Who was worthy? These people stood up and said, I'm worthy. I'm worthy. I'm worthy, God. And I said, I'm help. And he called me out by name after this, all these people had stood up. And, and I'm cowering in fear. I, I can't even look up. And I said, no, Father, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. And I said, no, you're, you're my man. I get hung up a lot of times on, on the worthiness and the worthiness and the worthiness and how I'm not worthy. I'm my own worst enemy. I beat myself up the most. I don't need anybody else to do it usually because I do a good enough job by myself. But it's not about my worthiness. It's about His glory. It's about what He did for me. He took on the sin. He knew no sin, yet He took it on and bore my sin. My sin. He died for me. He died for each and every one of you individually. While we were yet in sin, He made that way. At the Last Supper, Jesus was uh, talking with Peter. He was talking with Peter. Peter, they were very close. They were very close friends. They were brothers. And He's talking about how Peter's going to deny him three times. And he says to Peter, Peter, Satan has sought after you to sift you as wheat. It's like Job. You know, when Satan came to God and asked permission to tempt him. God doesn't tempt us. God sends us no temptation. But he allows Satan. He allows, he gives him that permission. And that's what... That's what he's saying to Peter here is, dude, Satan has come to me, man. Satan wants you. He wants your testimony. He wants your life. He wants to throw you away. Well, I want to use you for good. He wants to use you to make you a hypocrite. He wants to use you to deny me. This man who claimed to be so close to me, he wants to use you 
to turn people away, saying, but that was his best friend. Even he denied him. Then he goes on to say, but I have prayed for you. But I have prayed for you. And then after you are converted, strengthen your brothers. And I was thinking as I was coming home this week, kind of a long, stressful week, and, and I was thinking about Jesus praying for me. And what that... You imagine? I mean, think about it for a moment. God, the creator of the ends of the earth, He's praying for you. He's up in heaven right now praying for you. That he would know me by name. That he would care enough for me to sit there and pray for me. That's why I love Christ. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He knows me better than I know myself. You know, I get hung up on this worthiness. I get hung up on why. Why do I keep having a struggle? Why, why, why? What, what is the point? What is... But you know, to God, He didn't exalt the day of mourning over the day of rejoicing. They're all the same to Him. Time is nothing to Him. So He sees the end result. He sees the lives that are touched in the process. He sees the hearts that are changed. He doesn't see, He sees the pain, but that's not what it's about. The, the pain is just, just a feeling. That's not what it's about, it's about the lives. It's about our hearts. The Bible says, think it not a small thing when, when a man or woman gives their life to the Lord for you to save their soul. Two weeks ago, we were in Greek court. I had the privilege of witnessing a young lady give her, give her heart to the Lord. And I could feel the angels rejoicing. You know, we're connected by this spirit. We're different people. But we're connected by the same spirit. If you believe in Christ as I do, you believe that He left His spirit here for us to guide us to love us, to help us love each other. A couple weeks ago, I'm struggling and one of my good friends from high school who lives in Florida calls me out of the blue. I haven't talked to him for a month or two. He says, I've been thinking about you. I've been thinking about you a lot. I've been thinking about you every day. And to me, that is the spirit, the same spirit that is inside of me that is hurting that is struggling, says to him, hey, your brother's hurt. Why don't you give him a call? Why don't you tell him how much you love him? That's the spirit that connects us all. <clears throat> Thank the Lord. Our Savior, Born in a manger. The Bible prophesied about it down to the letter, down to the T. 500 years, 1,000 years before you ever walked the earth. And they missed it. We didn't miss it. Yesterday was my best friend's birthday. Passed away two years ago, heroin overdose. Uh, and I know what it feels like for me, my best friend, my brother. Well, my heart breaks for his, for his family, for his parents, and for his sister. And I know that so many of us in here have been through the same, this very same thing. My heart breaks for you also. But we are joined by the same Spirit. And Jesus is praying for us. And I'm praying for you. And we're praying for each other. And together we can do this. If God before us, who can be against us? If God before us, who can be against us? <coughs> Let's pray. Lord God, thank you so much. Thank you for loving us so much. That you would send your son, you would sacrifice your own son for each and every one of us. 
pray that you would help us be with us today in whatever struggle we're going through. Be with us today in the happiness, Lord. Be with us today in the rejoicing. Be with us in the sorrow. Be with us always. Whatever our individual hearts need right now, Lord, I pray in your spirit, Lord, that you would come into our lives. That you would touch what needs touched. You would nudge us where we need nudged, Lord. That you would give us peace where we need peace. I pray that you help us as brothers and sisters in your name to build each other up, to love each other the way that you would have us love. I pray that if there's anyone in here that doesn't know you by name, Lord, open that invitation to them. Give them the courage to seek out somebody, speak with them, pray with them. For we know that that is the most important thing. That is where you rejoice. That is where you throw the parties. When a soul is saved. Lord, we can go and walk in this world, do good things, live a good life, but if we, if we lose our soul, what is it worth? I pray that you would convict the hearts this morning that need convicted. I pray that you would just go with us. Bless this people. Bless your people. We are your people. You are our God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.